Mr. Weiss is the single architect over that sweetheart plea agreement deal. I am very fearful that appointing the special counsel is just an attempt to stonewall Congress's investigation of the Biden family. This was a political decision, not a legal decision. They're trying to put out a fire, and they just poured gasoline on it. We're back with a Fox News alert. Republicans raising concerns as David Weiss is appointed special counsel in the investigation of Hunter Biden. A spokesperson for House Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan says Weiss can't be trusted, and this is just a new way to whitewash the Biden family's corruption. So, should someone from the outside of government handle this case? Let's ask Fox News contributor and George Washington University Law School professor Jonathan Turley. Good morning, Professor. I watched you yesterday say in very plain words that there is a regulation on what a special counsel is and um, and you, this does not abide by it. But really, there's no recourse for that. Only the Justice Department can really take issue with the Justice Department not abiding by its own regulation, correct? That's right, Joey. And that's the problem with this law is that it's not enforceable. It's something Congress needs to look at. Uh, the law is quite clear. The purpose of a special counsel is to pick someone who is unassailable, someone who has no connections to the Department of Justice, to assure the public that this is truly independent in every respect of, of that term. Uh, instead, Merrick Garland appointed someone who's l under a cloud of suspicion. He's literally being investigated by Congress for his conduct and handling of the prior Hunter Biden investigation. Mm. Uh, it, it, it flips the special counsel law on its head. Now, it's true the Department of Justice did violate this before with the appointment of John Durham, who came from within the mm. Justice Department. But Durham wasn't under any cloud of suspicion. He wasn't under any uh, attacks over uh, allegations of fixing the, the investigation. You know, Jonathan, uh, that would be akin to, to Merrick Garland picking some other, you know, prosecutor at some other jurisdiction far away within the DOJ, but he picked the one guy who's directly <laughs> related, exactly as you described, right. in this case. So I know it's hard to get inside another person's head, Jonathan, but, you know, Rachel asked this question earlier. It so clearly um, suggests political malfeasance. It so clearly is, a, how, what could be a motivation uh, how about this? What is your most charitable explanation for the motivation of Merrick Garland? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough <laughs> question, Will, because uh, it's truly inexplicable. You know, I supported the appointment of Merrick Garland. I thought that it was an inspired choice. He had a great reputation as a judge, as someone that got people together, that unified people. And I wrote a column not long ago saying it's, it's really painful for me to say that he's an utter failure as an attorney general. I mean, mm. his personality just did not lend itself to this job. Uh, he lacks that strength and leadership that you need. This was that moment when he needed to step up and do the right thing. And what that meant is to appoint someone completely uh, outside of the investigation, outside of the Department of Justice, and also to expand the mandate, to say, look, there are allegations of influence peddling involving the president. Some are related to these tax charges. Let's get this all investigated. And if there are crimes that are revealed, those crimes will be prosecuted. And so this mandate is expanded. I'm giving it to somebody new. And the public can feel assured that the Department of Justice is looking after their business. He didn't do that. Uh, and instead, he magnified the problems here. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know anyone who could possibly look at this appointment and not be completely mystified as to his thinking. Jonathan, how is this going to affect the House investigation? Well, that's a great question, Rachel. I, I, I think that there was uh, obviously uh, a, a blowback on, on Congress, the, uh, the, the most immediate impact of this appointment was to insulate the Department of Justice itself and Weiss. Uh, the, the House was closing in on Weiss, demanding interviews from right. him and his lieutenants. This will make it much, much more difficult, but it won't stop things. In fact, in a curious way, they may have tripped a wire here by not expanding mm. the mandate. 
it's pretty clear now that Congress needs to investigate, including a possible impeachment inquiry, because nobody else is looking at the corruption scandal. Yeah. Really quick, could that have been why they he asked for the special counsel title so he wouldn't have to go before the House committee? Because the House, you're right, the House said they wanted to bring him in and investigate him because he thwarted so many of the investigations that the IRS whistleblowers were trying to look into. Well, whether that's the motivation, that will be the impact. Mm. If he speaks, I expect he will say very little now that yeah. he's special counsel. Yeah. So obviously corrupt. Mm. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.